going to read a poem um, that I wrote when I was 19 years old. Um, almost 2,000 years ago. Um, <laughs> no, it was written on the 19... Um, sorry, I was 19 years old in um, 19, eight, 1998. Oh, my dyslexic. I don't know how I'm going to read anything today. My, my brain is um, not functioning well. <laughs> anyway... Um, so before I start, I just want to say thank you to everyone who supports this channel. Thank you for liking. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Um, please help this channel to grow. Please share, um, my content and, um, yes, I can't grow without you as I keep on saying. Um, <laughs> so it's called What's Saving Me? I'm in an invisible glass ball, sinking in a bottomless sea, to be trapped for all eternity. There is no one else in here, no one out there, no one wants to save me. And I have this hammer in my hand, and it's not that I don't want to be free, you see. This ball that holds me hostage is also what's saving me. Um, around the, well, ever since I was very young, I thought I had a split personality, but I didn't understand what was going on. And I'm sure many people feel that way. So I want to talk about um the mystery of conjunctions or the mystery of paradoxes when i was um in my 20s spirit revealed to me that i'm paradoxical i didn't know what the hell that meant and we didn't have youtube back then <laughs> i was mid-20s or something and a voice said to me you're paradoxical and i thought what the hell does that mean so when I looked it up in paper dictionary, because that's what we had when I was when I was a young girl, um, <laughs> before computers was invented, <laughs> back in the old days, um, prior to, to having studied psychology, prior to having studied philosophy and all these things, I just had the Oxford dictionary, and it, the, the definition of, of paradox was quite rubbish. Um, but later on, I understood paradoxes um, a lot more and what that means. Now, I was, I had encountered a situation in my very young age and many, many encounters um, where I had two opposing feelings to it. And this is why I thought I had a split personality. And I thought that all the way through my studies, when I started studying um, to, to become a counselor, I thought that they were just going to say, you're mad, <laughs> you're not fit, <laughs> you're insane, um, <laughs> and they were going to send my work back. I was always just so anxious, but it turned out that I actually um, had awakened to a certain extent, and most people who are awakened to a particular extent will feel like you're a bit nuts, okay? And, you, you know, and you have these two, you can have these very extreme and opposing views and be, be so you have the ability to see things um, almost as though you're two different people with two different, with two different opinions. And it can be um, of a great conflict in the early days. Okay. So, um when I had encountered this particular issue, I, I, it, was, it was devastating for me. It was one of the most devastating things. But at the same time, I was able to understand that if I didn't have that issue, that my life could be or would be even worse. Um, and so it was incredibly, incredibly painful. Okay. And um, so I wanted to, to read a quote from, um, 
Oh, actually, before I before I read the other quote, I'm going to just give a little quote that I I came across, but I, I don't remember. It's a long time ago, and I don't remember who said it, but it was it stuck in my mind because I thought it was so wonderful. And this person said, "Sometimes God gives you your greatest blessing." cleverly disguised as your worst nightmare and i just thought that was so wonderful so it's it's stuck in my head um i don't know who said it i'm tempted to, to believe i don't know actually I, I can't say there's a good couple of different people that i i i listen to um and i don't know who said it so i'm not going to try to say a name um i want to quote something that um murray Letovir, I can't pronounce his name. I might, I'll have to just put his name in, in the, um, pin his name to the comments if you want to look him up. So he's a writer of yoga, of Jesus, teaching of esoteric Christianity. Um, you can also find an audio on YouTube if you're interested. Okay, so he says, we grow and learn to trust in love through many incarnation and crisis. Having eaten from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, we start to learn from the tree of painful efforts. Here, in the world of polarities, conflicts, and separateness, we learn to resolve the polarities and find unity behind them. Jesus teaches his followers using paradoxes in which the opposite seems to transform into each other. When we meet people who have started to purify their minds, we notice that they have found the key to contradiction and paradoxes. They see beauty in and through ugliness. They understand that suffering is a blessing in disguise. They see that being sensitive takes courage. They treat malefactors with compassion and love because they know in the end there is no other solution. When people start seeing paradoxes, they learn that there is a microcosm within that is like the microcosm without, as above, so below. And he posed this as a question, but I am going to make it a statement that paradoxical thinking enables human, in a, sorry, paradoxical thinking enables human consciousness to evolve towards unity. This is something that Jung strongly believed, and Jung wrote um, uh, the mystery, the mis mysterium conjuncta unis. Um, I can't pronounce that word either. <laughs> you might have thought I pronounced it properly. Um, it's the mystery of paradoxes, and Jung says, you know, like the first stage of us um, actually becoming awakened is that split that we will have this split inside because we are able to observe our ego. There is the, the, the self observing the ego, or at least you're experiencing yourself as two people, um, the observer and that which is being observed. And of course, when you don't know this, if, you, if you're not as, you know, um, a, a person who understand esoteric psychology, um, or Jungian psychology, then you are going to think you're crazy, which is what happens to a lot of people. Actually, the beginning of awakening, they start to feel like they're mad and then they go and, you know, go and get uh, put back to sleep <laughs> with medication or put in a straitjacket, depending on how much you're not behaving yourself. So, um, if you're if you're conflicted inside, if you feel like you're these two people chatting to yourself and can't agree sometimes, or you're able to see the good and bad, and that's it's actually a good thing when you're able to see the good and bad in in this in the same in the same thing. And actually, when we when we were studying psychology, um, we were we were told to argue which is more of an argument, we would we used it for argumentative reasons. So they will tell us to argue the opposite point of um, like something that you don't believe in, but you must learn how to argue for that opposite point. And in that way, it's teaching you how to see things differently. But unfortunately, it's not used for good. It's just used to make you tricky and to evolve the brain. But anyhow, <laughs> um, but if you think you're going mad, actually you're just, um, you're awakening and that's a good, 
that's a good thing. And it starts off with confusion and a feeling of turmoil and just, you know, complex emotions and contradict contradictory feelings. I feel like I have just fumbled through this. I apologize. Um, but thank you uh, for watching and do subscribe if you have not subscribed. And until next time, love, light, life. Mm -hmm.